So now I'm walking back through the part of the park which is closer to the old Moorish fortress. Finally, tick berries bearing fruit. They are quite a popular ornamental in the Mediterranean, but for weeks I have been looking for fruit on them. And it seems like in early spring, neither in Portugal nor in Seville could I find any fruit, but here, come on, focus. They are still the old dried up fruit from last year. Anything fresh? Anything I can eat? Nope. One single domestic pine up there along the olive cypresses and date palms. But I'm not gonna go up there to harvest the nuts. Good sized lychee tree growing here among hundreds of Sevilla oranges. I wonder who thought of this combination. Well, thanks a lot to the sky for planting this lychee, which seems to be fruiting quite a lot in summer, if I can judge from the old inflorescences. Sticking out everywhere. Blackberry trees, a date palm probably infested by the palm beetle, and the loud and unsaturable parakeets everywhere. Just look at the size of those birds of paradise compared to the people next of them. The strelitzias are at least 10 meters tall. Old bread fern. I think we're gonna stay away from this one. Some strelitzia flowers on the shortest stems. I might be able to snack a couple edible seeds from there, but they are not that good, so for now I'm leaving them. I read about an ancient male bread fern somewhere in continental Spain, and the ancient female bread fern on Tenerife, and they basically brought pollen from the male one to the one in Tenerife, and now they can plant them everywhere. I wonder if it's this one. It seems to be very old, you can judge by the height of the stem. A big Moraton Bay fig. Let's see if I find something edible on the ground. Mm. Nope. Doesn't look good. Should be sweet and juicy in summer. Even in southern France I found good one, but seems that in winter they're only good on the Canary Islands. No, those are tough and green inside. Haha, I remember those really tall cabbage palms here. They were the first really tall palms I've ever seen. Should be about 20 meters or so. Impressive. This must be by far the biggest bread fern I've ever seen. The stem is about 5 meters tall, the leaves adding 2 more meters. Encephalertus laurentianus, a male plant branching not just at the base but also in the middle of the stem. Beautiful. Huge Peruvian apple cactus, although I doubt that it's supposed to grow in the shade of this gigantic tree, which even dwarfs this seven meter tall cactus. Mulberries! Lots of mulberries, but in a couple months. Not yet, sorry. Bananas! Lots of bananas, but too much shade. Bananas! Lots of bananas! But without enough sun, water and fertilizer, I doubt I'll find fruit here. Those bananas in parks and even in private gardens, they simply don't get enough water and fertilizer and often also they lack enough sun. As you can see, none of those is yet trying to form a banana bunch. What about this big one? Leaning on this dragon tree, basically hiding inside the dragon tree. Let me look around. Wow! 
a full size bunch of Topocho bananas. 20 years ago I would have jumped in and harvested them all. Probably carried them around for a week or so or two and then thrown them away. Now I know they are not good yet. Maybe if I stay a little bit longer in the area, I'll wait till they arrive. Beautiful. The big well-developed ones are bigger than a Cavendish banana, but most of the fruit are small and underdeveloped. Yeah, still not enough water, fertilizer and sun around here. Oh wait, there are mulberries on the ground. Not looking completely ripe, but already red enough to be eaten. So there also should be mulberries on the tree. Those red mulberries are not Morus rubra. They are going to become black and still they are not Morus nigra. They are Morus alba, the white mulberry. Why does the white mulberry have red and black fruit? Well, because most white mulberries have black or purple fruit, but I'm afraid still a bit too early. Or maybe not. Let's see what those things taste like. Unripe, but nice mulberry taste already. A white sapote tree. But of a variety or even species unfamiliar to me. It looks different from all the other white sapotes I've seen. Or maybe just because it's not covered in flowers. You can see a big fruit up there. A nice big white sapote fruit. Let's see if there are any of them further down too. Two out of season fruit in reachable distance with a stick. I could beat them down and carry them around for a couple days until they get ripe. Who needs a stick? when you have a palm in fluorescence. Oh. Okay, got the small one, but I want the big one. Change the technique. Got it. Here it is. Stop. No, not on the street. Stop, stop, stop. Gotcha. A nice out of season white sapote. Quite a number of queen palm fruit growing there. But are they good? Only one way to find out. No, good enough, sweet, with a good apricot, or rather cherry plum taste. This white sapota tree here looks a little bit out of place. I wonder, it's a seedling of the nearby older tree. I also see a couple small unripe fruits. On this one, they're gonna be good in a couple weeks. Too young, no use to eat them now. But wait, when I touched the leaves, I felt something. Something I couldn't feel on the tree where the leaves were high up. Those leaves are very fluffy. They are like velvet. They are very different from all the white sapote leaves I touched in the last weeks and months. Folks, I think... Now, I thought this could be a different species. Now, I'm more or less convinced it's a different species. Just have to find out the name of the white sapote with the fluffy leaves. Can you see the fluff? How it's breaking, reflecting, refracting the light? This is definitely a 
different sapote from those with uh, totally smooth leaves. I ate, for example, in southern Portugal recently. It's very interesting. Now I'm really sad I don't see big fruit ready for harvest on this tree. Now back to the first tree, the biggest one. Is it fluffy too? I'm so excited, I'm so excited. It is fluffy. Hmm, is this a plum you? To be sure I forgot what the plum you looks like exactly. But this one looks pretty much like it. Incredibly tasty fruit. I ate them in Monaco in September. But yeah, September and March, they are kind of on opposite sides of the calendar. So I guess no tasty plum you for me today. Phoenix Reclinata. The ones here in Spain look like true Phoenix Reclinata again. The ones in Portugal were kind of stocky and bushy and I think maybe they are different species. However, no fruit for a taste comparison. What a pity. Didn't even expect it anything like this. Looks strange. Brown capsules with huge seeds inside. So folks, this was a short tour through the wonderful and botanic garden-like parks in the center of the city of Malaga. Of course, I did not cover everything. For example, I'm absolutely sure there are jelly palms here. Oh, there are a lot of other tasty edible palms. Just come here for yourself. Check out the city of Malaga and the surrounding farms and botanic gardens. Apart from that, stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful subtropical Spanish European city of Malaga. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.